Hello, it's Scarlet Lunning, and today I will be starting my first video of my channel. So this channel is all going to be about reading a chapter of a, my f one of my favorite books that I've already read a day, and then at the end, if any suggest any suggestions will be will be a lot. Thank you. So today, the first book that we will be doing the first chapter of is "Don't Tell the Nazis." So, the, I, I will always read the back before I start the book. In the midst of war, can she make a difference? The year is 1941. Christia lives in, Ukraini, in a Ukrainian, Ukrainian village sorry, under, a, under the cruel occupation of the Soviets. So when the Nazis marched in to, to liberate the town, many of Christia's neighbors welcomed the troops with celebrations, hoping for a better life. But conditions don't improve. Christia's friend, Dolik, and the other Jewish people in, the, in town warned that the new occupiers, occupiers may only bring darker days. The worst begins to happen at, at, as Nazis force Jews into a ghetto. Christia does not does what she can help to Dolok and his family, but they really need is a place to hide. Faced with unimaginable trini, triony, oh my goodness, and cruelty, will Christia risk everything to protect her friends and neighbors? Marsha Fotruk, never mind, okay. So that's the back. That's basically about what we'll do. Don't tell the Nazis. Chapter 1. The end of them. June 18th, June 28th, 1941. Ukraine. I huddled close to my sister under the com comforter, under the comforter and prayed that we, that we lived through the night. At any moment, the door might burst open and we could all be dragged from our beds. Another gunshot, running footsteps, screams, a low, growling boom. The bedroom flashed bright for one brief moment, and I saw the terror in Mama's face as she pointed the pistol toward the closed door. The room plunged back into darkness. Silence. Moments passed. Chrysia and Maria whispered Mama, try to sleep. Maybe the Soviets would be gone by morning. How long to, how long to get, how I long to, how I long to get back to what... It was like before the war, with enough food to eat and without walking, having to walk my eyes cast to the ground, afraid to speak. Afraid to speak to a friend, fear of being arrested. I lay back down on my pillow, listening for the next volley of gunfire. We had all heard the friend, that the friendship between the Germans and Soviets had fallen apart, and that the Germans were pushing up the Soviets. But as that happened, the Soviets were like angry bees, attacking us civilians and stealing all all they could as they fleed, as they fled. As the moments ticked, as the minutes ticked by, Mama and Maria both drifted into sleep and their rhythmic breathing muffled the sound of explosions. More distant now, but I could not relax. I tried to breathe slowly, to lure myself to sleep. A low squeak of rusted hinges. I bolted up. It sounded like someone opening the door of the cow shed along the house. I climbed out of bed crept to the main room and pressed my ear against the wall. A faint thump and then the crush of straw. Someone was definitely in her hayloft. Was it someone fleeing from the Soviets? If we were caught hiding and run if we if we were caught kite if we were caught hiding and run away, they'd punish us. If I were brave, I'd go down there now and find out what it was. But I was too frightened to to do that. Instead I got back into bed and closed my eyes, praying that whoever was hiding in the shed would be gone by morning. I hoped Mama wouldn't wake up and investigate the noise. What if the runaway got scared and shot her? The tattoo already dead. I couldn't bear the thought of losing Mama too. I forced myself to slow breathe in and out. And pray that the runaway would leave before we had to figure out what to do. Somehow I slept. Beams of daylight through the bedroom window woke me. All was silent. Mama slept, her pistol resting on her chest with one hand flopped on top of it. Even though I didn't feel all that brave, I was your daughter, so it was my responsibility to protect what was left of our family. I got out of bed, careful not to wake Maria, and slid the pistol out from under Mama's hand. I put it into the pocket of my nightgown, then tiptoed to the big room. With my ear against the wall, I listened. But now the only sound from the cow shed was Cross's familiar breathing. I picked her I peeked out at the road from behind the curtains. No sweaters. I grabbed the milking pail, opened the front door, and stepped out. Chapter 2 is called In the Loft, which I will read tomorrow.
thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and comment down below what book you would like me to read after I finish this. Thank you. Have a good day.